With us, Chief Legal Affairs Correspondent Paula Reed, Senior Supreme Court Analyst Joan Piskupik, also a team of the best lawyers on earth. First, <laughs> to Paula Reed. Paula, tell us what the judges said here. So here, uh, the D.C. Circuit Court rejecting former President Trump's argument that presidential immunity should shield him from the federal election subversion case. Now, this outcome was very much expected. He lost on this issue at the trial court, and a month ago, when they held oral arguments on this question, the three judges hearing the case appeared quite skeptical of Trump's lawyers' arguments that their client enjoyed near absolute immunity for anything that he did while in office. Let's listen to this quote now from today's opinion. They say, quote, for the purpose of this criminal case, former President Trump has become citizen Trump with all of the defenses of any other criminal defendant. But any executive immunity that may have protected him while he served as president no longer protects him against this prosecution. Pretty clear there on what they think of his claims of presidential immunity. But this is also very much about timing. The Trump legal strategy, while they are litigating some legitimate constitutional questions, they are also trying to do anything they can to delay these federal cases until after the November 2024 election. If Trump is reelected, he could, through his attorney general, likely make both of these cases go away. That is part of why they want to delay these. And this appeals court heard this case on an expedited schedule, but it still took them a month to issue this opinion. But now they are making up for lost time because they're saying that they're going to send this whole case back down to the trial court next week unless the Supreme Court intervenes. Now, if the Supreme Court does not opt to intervene here, if this does go back to the trial court next week, that means that it is likely that this case could go to trial before November. All right. I just, you know, this is happening very quickly, what they're asking for the response very quickly. What is going to happen next? In other words, how quickly might a case go forward, Jack Smith's case in particular, go forward? So first, we know that the Trump team is going to appeal. They issued a statement to our colleagues They're saying they're going to appeal. What's not clear is that they're going to take a sort of a midway step, which is to ask the full circuit court of appeals to have a hearing on bonk. So all the judges in the circuit would hear the case. Now, many people opt not to do that, because if you lost with three judges, unlikely uh, many times that you're going to win with the full circuit. But here again, it's about anything to delay. So they may try that. These three judges have laid out instructions if the Trump team does that or they will appeal to the Supreme Court. And they've set this deadline of February 12th. If the Supreme Court does not intervene by February 12th, the circuit is going to send this back down to the trial court. Now, after that, when can this find a place on the calendar? Well, possibly uh, April. I mean, they're going to need a little time to prepare. Uh, the case has been on hold. Uh, the judge has frozen all the filings, the things that they need to do to prepare. But it could absolutely go this spring, possibly this summer, if it goes back to Judge Tanya Chutkin uh, next week. All right, Paul, stand by. I want to bring in our senior Supreme Court analyst, Joan Piskupic. The Supreme Court now has to decide by February 12th whether they even want to take this up. What are the considerations here, Joan? Well, first of all, I don't. isn't that the deadline for when Donald Trump has to appeal? Because they, they can't really put a deadline on the Supreme Court itself. Paul, Paul the Supreme Court is going to... Can you clear that up, Paul? Yeah. Because the, the, the panel said yes. if they don't hear from the Supreme Court, by February 12th, they'll kick this back down to the district court. Isn't that correct? You give me a second. I'm going to pull up the, the exact language and we'll just read it on air. So give me a second. I'm going to pull it actually out of their opinion. Okay. As you look for that, Joan, the considerations that this court will make when deciding whether to rule here or whether even to hear sure. arguments. Right. First of all, the law is on Jack Smith's side. The precedent on whether a president can be absolutely immune from criminal prosecution after leaving office. The, the general precedent is on his side. This lower court opinion is very forcefully written. It was unanimous by a, a, a three judges who you know, embody everyone back from a George H.W. Bush appointee to two uh, recent Biden appointees. So it's a very solid opinion, as I said, very robustly written. So it could stand. The justices could say, mm. we don't want part of it. But the justices also, and I, as I like to remind people, it only takes four of the nine votes to grant the case. They could decide that this is a question that's so important they want to weigh in, or there might be some incentive to at least 
you know, take some time to decide whether to weigh in. That's why I said it's important to know, uh, is that February 12th deadline for Donald Trump or mm -hmm. for the court? I would think it's more for Donald Trump, but I don't know um, because I uh, ha hadn't seen that part of the order yet. But the justices could decide to back away. Look, they already have a very politically charged case that they're going to hear on Thursday involving Donald Trump and whether uh, the 14th Amendment uh, would bar him from being on state ballots because of uh, an insurrectionist provision in that amendment. So they're going to be in a very politically charged situation already. They don't like to be involved in any kind of election cases. And their past cases with Donald Trump have all been fraught and very difficult to resolve. Uh, quite a challenge behind the scenes for Chief Justice John Roberts. But in this case, uh, they could decide this lower court opinion will just stand, or they could decide we're going to hear this case. And if they decide to hear this case, John and Sarah, it could take several more weeks, if not months. All right. Uh, Joan, you brought up the cases uh, that they are going to take up, one of which is, has to do with whether he can be on the ballot. But in those cases, there have been different opinions all over the place, which is natural for the Supreme Court to bring up. Paula, I want to go back to you. Have you determined, looking through this document, whether or not this is a deadline on Donald Trump's attorney team and Donald Trump, or whether it's a deadline on the Supreme Court that in six days uh, there has to be a decision or a filing? Well, as we indicated, this is, of course, a deadline for former President Trump. This is a guard against him waiting three, four, five, six, maybe right. weeks, maybe even months to file that appeal. And then, of course, the Supreme Court does what it wants when it wants. I was going to read the instructions from the circuit court, but it's pretty deep legalese. I'm going to spare our <laughs> audience that. But the translation is former President Trump has until next week uh, to notify the court that he has appealed uh, to the Supreme Court. If he does that, well, then they'll just wait to see what the Supreme Court does. And as I've said, you know, sources close it, to the Trump legal team said they would be surprised if the Supreme Court takes up this issue. Well, ahead, what Jim. will happen, though, there'll be a little bit of time first because the court will probably want to hear what Jack Smith says. You know, it's, it's not that the court will immediately on February 12th give us an answer. Uh, what they'll do, as Paula said, is they'll hear from Donald Trump, presumably by Febru February 12th, so that he can meet that deadline. And then typically what happens when the court is faced with this kind of petition or em emergency action is ask the other side, what do you think? What do you think, Jack mm -hmm. Smith? And presumably Jack Smith is going to say, no, stay out. You've got a very sound, uh, forcefully written decision from the D.C. Circuit. It hits all the key points of law. You do not in have to intervene. But that process in and of itself is not going to take just a matter of hours or even days. That could, that could take a week or two itself. Excellent. All right. Paula Reed, Joan Piscupic, thank you both for explaining that so well. With us now, Laura Coates, CNN anchor and chief legal analyst, Ellie Honig, CNN senior legal analyst, and Tim Heavey, former lead investigator for the January 6th committee. Laura, at a basic level here, this appeals panel has decided something very, very important. The line between what can be considered presidential actions and outside the scope of the presidency or, frankly, any official job. Why is that so important? Because it goes to the very heart of separation of powers and our system of checks and balances. We do not want any particular actor to have carte blanche, this blank check to do whatever he or she wants to do and never be held to account. One must answer for their criminal behavior, particularly if one is in a position like a president, like a member of Congress. You can go down the line. They took very good care in this opinion, though, to talk about, yes, we would like there to be immunity in certain instances as it relates to one's official behavior. They talked about judges for a great deal in terms of what their conduct is and how they could be answering for criminal behavior or allegations. But fundamentally, the question that Trump's team was asking and asking the court to find was that there was absolute immunity for conduct that occurred while in office without the guardrails, without the parameters. And that would uproot our discussions about checks and balances. This is a very striking opinion that goes to the very heart of how we view our democracy, which is why there are questions, as our cause had talked about, whether the Supreme Court will take it up or not. There is <clears throat> the law that is on the side of Jack Smith, but more importantly, on the side of checks and balances. And if we were to follow that thread, John, that suggests that a president has absolute immunity or could simply wait out 
the impeachment process, or if they're not convicted and removed, would get away scot-free for whatever behavior. That would really upend our notion of our checks and our balances.